All right, let's get into the weeds with credit and walk through what your credit score is actually made up of. Before we do, I want to say this again, your credit score does not affect how fast you can get out of debt. I'm including this because I feel as though it's valuable information to know when dealing with the world of personal finance. But if you want to get out of debt, spend as little as possible and put as much as possible toward your debt, simple and plain. All right, let's get into credit. So a credit score tells lenders about your credit worthiness, how likely you are to pay a loan back based on your previous credit history or your credit history as a whole. It's calculated using the information in your credit reports. Uh, FICO scores are the standard in regards to credit scores. Usually 90% 90 of lenders go off of your FICO credit score and credit scores influence the credit that's available to you and also influences the types of terms you can get, basically influences the type of debt that you can get, like your interest rate determines your length, determines your amount that the lenders will offer, but it pretty much determines the type of debt you can keep getting into. When you apply for credit, whether for a credit card or an auto loan or a mortgage, lenders want to know what risk they'd be making when they loan you that money. A credit score is basically a number that summarizes credit risk based on a snapshot of your credit report at a particular point in time. Pretty much where are you at? Where's your credit score at? Let me just pull it up. So your credit score is made up of five components. You know, we've always been curious what is actually in a credit score. It's built up of these five things. 35% of it comes from your payment history. 30% comes from your credit utilization. 15% is your credit age. 10% is types of credits. And then 10% is request, request, requests for new credit. Man, struggling on the word request. In this video, we're going to be, or this lesson, we're going to be focusing on the payment history, the majority, the 35% of your credit score. 35% of your credit score is built up from this, from this payment history. And your payment history shows uh, pretty much how you've paid your accounts over the length of your credit. The reason it makes up the majority of your credit score is because it's a track record of your payment trends and helps lenders determine the likelihood that you're actually going to pay back the debts that you agreed to pay back, right? A lender checks your past rec record of paying back loans because they want their money. They want you to pay your debt each month and soak up so they can soak up all of that compounding interest and they can snag every last dollar for you from you. They just want to make sure that you're actually going to pay them. So a late payment can follow you for up to seven years. A few late payments are not an automatic score killer. Overall, good credit history can outweigh one or two instances of a late credit card payment. However, no late payments in your credit report doesn't mean you're going to have a perfect credit score either. It's a rough game. Your payment history is just a slice of the credit score pie. So what accounts does this even apply to? What types of credit? Things like that. These are the types of accounts that your payment history falls under. This looks like a lot of words on the screen, but don't even worry about them. I'm going to break it down. Credit cards. Boom, you knew it. Retail accounts, if you got credit from stores where you shop at. Installment loans, these are like fixed payment type loans, mortgages, auto loans, finance company accounts, like if a bank gives you a personal loan or something like that. And then mortgage loans, essentially anything you have to make recurring payments on to pay off, how timely your payments were on different products like credit cards and installment loans and all that stuff is pretty much the lowdown of what payment history is. It's your history and all your payments. So other things to consider that go into your payment history is your public records, right? Bummer. Public records and collection items. That means whether you have bankruptcies, accounts and collections, lawsuits listed on your credit reports, those are events that are considered serious to those lenders. Although older items, you know, with small amounts, they count less and then newer, more recent items with larger amounts, they take a little more serious. And these are all things that negatively impact your credit score, your desired credit score, your bankruptcies. It's going to stay on your credit report for seven to 10 years, depending on the type lawsuits, wage attachments, wage attachments is when your employer holds, holds back some of your money that it was going to pay you. And they just give it straight to the creditor collections or whoever is demanding that money. IRS is a good one. So there's seven key components that make up payment history. Really, it's just if you're paying your stuff on time or not, but it's all of the payment information on all the line, lines of credit you have. If you're overdue on payments, you know, how far overdue, how long has it been since that payment was like 
since that delinquency was made, your negative public records go into that, the amount of past due items that you never paid, how much time has passed, the number of accounts that you agreed to pay back and did or did not, all of that goes into your payment history. Here's some tips to enhance your payment history. Pay your bills on time. Straightforward. Get current on your credit cards, get current on all the payments you owe, and then just stay current. Just keep that balance at zero for the love of everything good in this world. My goodness, don't, don't get behind your payments. If you can't afford it, do not buy it. You can contact your creditors and negotiate with them on the amount that you owe them in interest rates. Hopefully we'll talk about that in a little more detail to come, but you can just straight up call them and say, hey, what can you do? What's the leeway we got here? Late payments usually go on your credit reports and affect your score only if you are at least 30 days past due. So you may have to pay your lender or card issuer a late fee, you know, if it's in that 30 day window, but it can't legally be reported to the credit bureaus before then. Once you go past the 30 days, the late payment will show up on your payment history. The longer you go without paying, the worse it is for your credit score. And then conversely, if you pay all your bills on time, you'll have a good payment history and your score will benefit. Here's some concluding thoughts. My concluding thoughts are I hate credit scores. Oh my gosh, I think they're meaningless when it compares to building wealth. Come on now. Come on now. A close friend of mine, multimillionaire. Look at him go. Look at him go off into those multimillionaire range. But he's a multimillionaire and he told me he had a credit score of 720. This guy has millions of dollars in the bank and his credit isn't even considered perfect. It's ridiculous. That's why I don't think caring about a credit score is worth it. You know, I want to, I want to reiterate that I would rather you be debt free with tons of cash in the bank than to, to care about locking in that perfect credit score. Credit scores don't matter when you have cash. This whole section on credit is information you should know to be aware of what credit is, how it works. And for you, this is not for you to set out a goal to get better credit. That's not what I'm telling you. Keep your goal of getting out of debt exactly the same and keep this information in your back pocket. We don't want to finance anything ever again. So please do not take this as me saying you should go open a thousand credit cards and credit lines to start paying for everything. Not even remotely close to what I'm saying. Your credit score is just saying, hey, you, you would be great at paying back some debt. We don't ever want to finance ever again. So I'm glad I made that clear. I'll see you in the next one.